have a good session. Okay, great stuff. Okay. Um, I think we can keep going and um, start the session tonight. So it's a quick welcome to everyone. Thanks for uh, coming for sacrificing our evening just to learn about uh, your ECPA certification. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so let's just quickly run through what we're going to cover tonight. Etiquette. Uh, so if someone's got their mic, their mic on, they can you just mute it for the time being? Thanks. It's, I'm getting feedback. Okay, um, then we'll just do a quick overview of the uh, IABA um, and then we'll run through the certification overview. And then Franza will take us to his certification journey, give us some background, the inside story. Um, and then we'll go through some question answer and we're giving away a 250 rand voucher to uh, take a lot um, for the best uh, question. And then we'll close the evening. Just quickly on webinar etiquette, please guys, just turn your um, your uh, video streaming off. It does chew up the bandwidth. Um, turn your mics off, uh, otherwise we get quite a bit of feedback on this side. If you want to ask questions or make a comment, use the chat line. We'll pick it up from there and we'll try and answer you as soon as we can. And let's give who's ever speaking at that time um, the attention they need and deserve. Just a quick uh, note about our sponsor, Get Smarter. Um, so, and if you know who Get Smart is, um, they the proud sponsor of this webinar series. Um, and they also run a, quite a few short courses. I was privileged about two years ago to do the advanced diploma in project management. Uh, I can well recommend them, really good um, company, and they really have a, quite a good system going there and support system as well. So uh, at the end of the series of certification, they're offering a spot prize of a systems analysis course, an online short course, um, valued at about 14,900 Rand. Um, this course is endorsed by the uh, IABA as well, so you'll get your points for your, your ECBA as well. Get Smart is an online education company. Um, they're based in Cape Town. I've been to the offices, a really smart office. If you, if you know what Google Office looks like, They've got exactly that. It's really quite cool there. Um, they're also based in London, and they collaborate with leading universities around the world. I see they're offering a course from MIT now as well. That's quite interesting and quite exciting. Welcome to, to uh, visit their website, um, or phone them on 021-447-7565. It's 021-447-7565 if you want to uh, chat to them about their courses. So uh, let's talk about the IBA, the International Institute of Business Analysts. Um, so we've got a, a South African board. Um, our current president is Ryan Falster. I think I've pronounced his name properly. Um, and we've got Giovanni as the treasurer. Lucy is the secretary. Uh, Shadi, who's online, um, is our operations manager. And Francis, who's our speaker tonight, he's in charge of professional development for the IBA. Um, the IBA is an independent and organization, it's a non-profit, um, and its role is really to be the global thought leader within our industry, um, to help evaluate the role of business analysts and to elevate the role of business analysts in the profession. Um, they're an access point uh, for all uh, um, BAs, and they're there to support our profession and help us be better BAs to be the voice of the BAs as one voice in the industry. It's a global network um, of chapters across the world, um, about 300 corporate members and about 120 local chapters um, throughout the, the, the world. In South Africa, we've got obviously the South African chapter. And currently, I think the last uh, check it was 29,000 members worldwide. Uh, the value offering of the IBA, well, I'm going to bring up quite a few things here that you can see that we offer. 
And I'm not going to talk through each one of these because I want to give France as much time as it needs. But I just want to highlight one or two. I've just become a member of the IBA and I've been a member now probably about three months now. And I've been enjoying the, the webinars. I attended, attended one on Monday night with Adrian Reed from, from London. And um, if you know Adrian Reed, he's a phenomenal speaker, really dynamic speaker. And that's really such a big plus, uh, the webinars they offer. And I look at the webinars that are coming up. I mean, just the value you're getting uh, for that, um, for that price that you, of membership. I mean, the webinars themselves um, outweigh the cost of being a member of the IBA. Um, online library, I've made a use of a couple of articles there from online library. I've also a couple of books, online books, um, also very interesting books, and you can read them for free as a member online. Another thing for those of you, obviously, here, yeah, you're doing your ECBA, you're starting out in your career, look at the career roadmap. Um, it's really some useful information there um, to, uh, to follow and to plan out your career for the future. Uh, what is the BA Bach? So the BA Bach is made up of what we call the business course concept model, which is a discussion point for us to discuss business analysts in a common language. It's made up of six knowledge areas, um, each knowledge, and in total those knowledge areas make up about 30 tasks, with about 50 techniques supporting it, and about 29 underlying competencies for BAs. And then the five perspectives, which is the length through which we do business analysis work. Um, okay, I see some people are backing to here. Um, and you say, are you sure your internet connection is working? It's, is it strong enough? Just have a look at those kind of things. Okay, let's continue. So why do your certification? Um, well, firstly, uh, for recognition in the industry, recognition within your organization, um, increased income uh, possibilities. Um, it offers you the opportunity for professional, professional development. Um, it's a good value add to your res resume. The expected growth rate for business analysis between 2014 and 2024 is 14%. So that's quite a good reason why you should do, be doing your certification. So just looking at the certification in context of all the others, the ECBA being the first one, those are your entry level, no experience required, 21 hours um, over the last four years to enter. The CCBA is your next level up, that's 2,750 hours, and at least 900 hours in two of the six knowledge areas, or 500 hours in four of the six knowledge areas. And this you do through presenting a portfolio of evidence uh, that you load up onto the IBA website. And you can finish that off with a three hour exam um, of 130 multiple choice. The CCBA, C, sorry, the CBAP or the CBAP, very similar, um, except it's now seven and a half thousand hours over the last 10 years. Um, it's 900 hours in four of the knowledge areas. And on top of it, you have to do 35 hours of PDU um, training. PDU is the points you require, and you get that through doing um, training uh, that is certified by the IIBA. And it ends with a three and a half hour exam of 120 multiple choice questions that are case based. The C battle, we're still waiting to hear for more information about um, what the entry requirements are going to be for that. Um, but these are really your guys who are what I call the Gandalfs of, of business analysis. They're the guys who advance the profession, they're the guys that give back to the community, they're the guys who go to, for, to, to question and to get information and to get guidance to mentor and to uh, motivate us. So I think it's time for us to move on to Francois and let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's hear what he had to say, who's been through this. I'm currently busy with my CBAP, so um, I'm still on the beginning of the journey. So I'm going to hand over to Francois at this point. Oh dear, I need to share a screen here um there we go can can you see my slides yep can see it great stuff okay so i 
I'm going to take us through, through really through a very high level of the ECBI certification, um, what it is, um, who, who it's targeted at, and why you, you, um, you should get certified. I think Paul has touched on that a bit, and I'd like to touch, touch more on that. And then um, at the end of, the, of, the, of my slides, I'm going to hand over to Annalisa, who's actually started her certification journey for ECBI already. And I'd like to just share a couple of thoughts that she has. And then we'll, um, we'll go into some question and answers. If there's any questions about the certification, then uh, we can chat about it then. So firstly, who's the um, ECBA certification targeted at? It is mostly at um, BAs who, who have just entered the profession. So if you've just finished your, your degree in, in IT or in business analysis or some training, or even if you've been doing some other IT related work and you want to move into business analysis, but you don't have any experience yet. Um, then the certification is targeted at you. Um, what do you need to become certified or start the application process at least? As Paul mentioned, it's only 21 hours of professional development over four years, um, in the last four years at least. So if you did the 21 hours in one year, that's also fine. It doesn't have to be over four years. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about what the professional development entails and what counts as professional development. And then finally, why would you want to be certified? Um, I think the most important part is that it really sets you apart from everyone else in the, in the job market. It, it demonstrates that you are dedicated to, to the profession, that you're dedicated to continuous learning. Um, and it also, uh, it's really a really rewarding learning experience at the end of the day. So what the process looks like. Um, first off, you need to apply and pay. So you'll see there's two, there's two places where you pay. Um, but where you start is you, you first check whether you're eligible. So you'll need to check whether you've actually done enough professional development time. And as I said, it's 21 hours. So if you break it down, it's less than three days. And in the next slide, I'll actually explain exactly what the professional development entails. The next thing you need to do is to complete the online application. And as part of that online application, you'll need to pay the application fee. Once your application is then approved, um, so what happens there is that it goes back into some engine. They calculate whether you are actually eligible to write the exam. And once you're approved, you then go forward to register um, for the exam. So the first thing you need to, need to do is pay the exam fee. Now here you have two options. You can either become an IIBA member, which will cost you 85 US dollars. And if you become an IIBA member, your exam fee is 110 US dollars. So you'll see that adds up to then 195 US dollars. Now, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer because if you're not an IIBA member, then you'll pay 235 US dollars. So even if you just get this membership for one year, um, it at, at least makes financial sense because as Paul point, pointed out earlier, you're getting all of these additional benefits from the IIBA, um, plus you're getting a discounted exam fee. So it really makes sense to join the IIBA and then pay the reduced exam fee because the combined cost is still a lot lower than the, uh, the non-member non fee for writing the exam. So once you've paid for the exam, you'll also need to set up your examslocal.com account and then you'll schedule your exam as well. Obviously, you can schedule your exam at a later time if you want to, but I find that if I have a target date for writing the exam in mind, um, in mind then it, kind of in, in, it motivates me to study. I'm currently studying for another certification and my, my voucher for writing the exam is actually running out. So I know I have to write this exam before the end of April, so I've... I've been spent quite a lot of time studying for that. So the next thing you need to do is obviously prepare. Um, so to prepare for the exam, I, I suggest you first read through the entire Babok 3. Um, I'll, I'll get, get into a bit more detail on that in the next slide and, and what that entails. And then also familiar, familiarize yourself with the exam blueprint. The exam blueprint gives you some kind of idea of how the exam will be set up, which portions of the Babok um, will be represented in which percentage of the exam. Then you can do some sample questions. I will show you some sample questions in this presentation. Um, at the last minute, I really wanted to take out this bullet because if you look at the sample questions, uh, yeah, let, let's just say the sample questions won't really tell you too much. The next part that's very important is subscribing to a practice exam. Now, this will be at an extra cost and it's completely separate to the IRBA. I'd recommend that you use a, an endorsed education provider's practice exam. The reason why I'm saying this is no matter how well you study the, ba the BABOC, the exam questions are asked in such a way that you
practice exam really gets you into that mindset of, of understanding how the questions will be asked and how you should be answering them. And then finally, and if this, this aligns to your learning style and how you work in general, I'd recommend that you maybe consider joining a study group. And at the end of this webinar, we'll also create some opportunity for anyone who wants to join a study, study group to actually give their details and we'll maybe facilitate some meetup for anyone who wants to join. And then finally, you write the exam using your examslocal.com account. Um, so in, back in the day when I wrote the exam, I had to go into, into a, a specially designated um, venue where I wrote the exam in Pretoria at the time. What's different with the current exam with using exams local is you actually write the exam from the comfort of your own home. All that's necessary is you need to schedule the time. And what's also necessary, when you register your account, the, the website will actually check whether your computer is compatible with exams local. So it will look for things like you have a webcam, etc. Because while you're writing the exam, someone will actually be watching you all the time. So bear that in mind while you're writing the exam. Um, <laughs> But the whole point of that is that you're actually being uh, in, invigilated while you're writing the, the exam so that someone can check that you're not checking notes or that you're, that you're not cheating, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I'm very tempted to stop and ask questions right here, but I'm, I think let's, let's go through the slides and then we'll, we'll open up for Q&A right at the end. So the professional development requirements, and we, we had an interesting discussion about this um, uh, amongst, amongst <laughs> ourselves earlier this week when we prepared for the webinar. Um, what you need to do for, in terms of the professional development requirements is the 21 hours can be a combination or any one of these is an EEP that's endorsed education provider to see IIBA endorsed education providers, classroom or online courses or non EEP classroom and online courses it can even be conference track sessions, tutorials, keynotes or workshops or chapter events like this, for example, um, or self-directed learning. What's important just is that you keep track of this and that you have some kind of proof of the, of the learning that you did in case there is an audit in your particular application. Because what, what the IIBA does is from time to time, once a year, they will pick a sample of applications that they'll audit and actually ask for supporting documentation for the professional development hours that you've claimed. And they incidentally do the same for the more advanced certifications as well, like CCBA and CBAP. Okay, then talking about the exam blueprint, and to me, this is quite funny. I think it's only a bunch of BAs who will mark 2.5% of an exam or 12.5% of an exam or even 1%. I think it's quite funny. You can see where BAs. But you will see that 2.5% um, of the exam is for business, anal and, um, sorry, business analysis and the BA professional. 5% um, is the underlying competencies. Another 5% is for the key concepts. 125 for techniques, etc. And then in terms of the knowledge areas, we'll see that the biggest knowledge area that we're looking at in the EC, on the ECBI certification exam is the requirements analysis and design definition um, with only 1% solution evaluation and the other two big portions going to elicitation and collaboration and then also requirements life cycle management. So when you're busy studying and you're reading the, the, the BABOC, these are really the areas to look at very closely. So when you're preparing for the exam, and as I said, this is part, this is part one, part two is, is the practice exams. And I want to re-emphasize that you really shouldn't even consider going into the exam without having done the practice exam. Um, the practice exam will cost you maybe just over a thousand rand, but rewriting the exam will be even more expensive than that. So I'd really strongly recommend that you do, you, you do actually do the practice exam. Um, so the first step in studying is you read the Babak once, but I want to, uh, I, over here, I'd like to caution that you consider, that you take the, the Babak for what it is. Um, it's not a process or a technique or a methodology. You need to approach it as the definitive guide to our profession that informs commonly accepted practices, techniques, and methodologies. So at this point, I read off, but I think that really, that really summarizes what the Babak is and what it isn't. So, once you've read through it, you'll have to memorize it. And yes, it does feel a lot like rote learning. So you probably have to create some flashcards and make diagrams and all those things that you might not have done, done for a while. Um, but when you're memorizing the Babak, there are some aspects of the introduction that you'll need to memorize. So if, if we go back, sorry, if, if we go back there to, to how much of the exam is there, this business analysis and the BI professional, all of that will be in the introduction, the same with the underlying competencies. Um, the next area in the Babak is the key concepts. And the key concepts
Oh dear. Um, okay. No. Um, sorry. Can you maybe can you maybe go on mute? There we go. Okay. So the next thing then is the knowledge area. So you'll see of the, the, there will be the six knowledge areas that are discussed, and in each knowledge area starts with um, the business analysis core concept model and how each one of those core concepts is applied in that knowledge area and what the relevance is. Then it will go into the tasks per knowledge area. So within a particular knowledge area, you might have three or four tasks, and then those tasks will show what the guidelines and tools are for those, um, for those tasks, what the inputs and the outputs are for each task, what the elements are for each task. The elements are almost considerations or aspects of that task that you need to consider. And then finally, the techniques that you need to be, be using for that task. Now, as an example, a typical question in the exam would be, um, it might say, Laura is currently doing the following. She's, she's busy compiling a document that contains the following. Which tasks are Laura currently busy with? So it might say something like, um, Laura is busy with elicitation, or Laura is, Laura is busy with design, etc. So you'll need to know the, the definition of the tasks very well, together with the input and the output. So another question, for example, would be, Laura just received the following information from one of her colleagues. What is the next tasks that she could start with? And that again speaks to the fact that the, the Babak doesn't define a process necessarily, but a whole bunch of tasks. And you'll need to know what the inputs are for the tasks for you to know which tasks um, Laura would need to start next and that kind of question. And then my final example of a question here is, Laura is currently busy with the following task. Which of the following techniques can she use? And I think from your, from your experience from studying and even schools, this is probably one of the worst multiple choice questions to get because you'll have five options and each one of those five options contain six techniques that you can use and each one of them look equally correct with maybe one looking marginally wrong. And this is where it's really important to actually know these things almost off by heart. And as I said, you need to know the exact definitions of the knowledge areas and tasks. Um, what will one of the other kinds of questions that will be asked is which of the following is the correct definition for requirement solicitation for example and then i'll give you again six definitions of which only one looks absolutely wrong and the other five look similarly correct and you need to be careful there then you need to also un uh, memorize the underlying competencies what are the underlying competencies that we need to have as business uh, business analysts then the techniques and over here I, I wouldn't memorize too much about the techniques other than which techniques are applicable to which tasks. Yes, you have to be conversant in the techniques, but what's more important here is which techniques are relevant to each task. Um, and again, at least be conversant in it. So if, um, if the technique is item tracking, you must at least be able to know what item tracking means. It is probably less important to know exactly what all the attributes are for item tracking, as an example. And then finally, and this is new and quite exciting again for the Babak 3, is what the different perspectives are for business, ana business analysis. So if you look at the Babak 3, it's almost the business analysis of business analysis. It says, what do we do when we are doing business analysis? And then it breaks it down and says, in which kind of context or in which kind of settings could we be doing business analysis? And that's what perspectives is about. So we could be doing business analysis in the agile environment or in business intelligence, even in information technology, architecture, or business process management, et cetera. And then finally, I think just to assist you with actually um, internalizing the, the material and really making, uh, sorry guys, can everyone perhaps please go and mute? Um, can everyone still hear me? I'm, I'm going to guess that's a yes. Um, if you can't hear me, just give a shout or something. Um, I think to internalize the material and really make the, make the learning experience as rewarding as possible, um, consider the practical applications of the material as well. And then in the exam, and I, I think this is also important, you'll get a feel for this when you're doing the, 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 the practice exam, is what, what you do in practice is sometimes the wrong answer in the exam. No matter how convinced you are that this is good and right for a BA to do, um, it's, the exam itself will, will always be based on the letter of the, of the Babak. And you need to be careful for those kinds of things. And again, 
it bears repetition. Um, be sure. on the ecba that's not that, that's not so much true but i would still recommend that as you're studying that you actually consider the practical applications of the material okay and then as i said um here are some sample questions and i think it will be good if you if you have a look at those but more importantly definitely can very strongly consider actually subscribing to one of the practice exams and then finally for me why why did i become certified and um I think five years down the line, or almost five years down the line, um, why, why would I do it again? Why would I stay certified? So in the first place for me, for the sake of learning, um, to me studying for, the, studying for my CBAP exam was probably one of the most rewarding BA experiences. Um, and I'd, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to support that by, by saying that it, it gave me a framework and a common language to talk about business analysis to, to people. Um, when, when I could... When, when we were having debates about how business knowledge should be done, it was always helpful to, to refer back to some common language that's internationally recognized in terms of, of what's necessary and, and which, which tasks should happen, which tasks are important. And, and I think even where the accountability of certain things should sit. And, and, and that, really, that, that made it really great. I, I think um, I, I became a better business analyst for it at the end of the day. And then... It also increases your opportunities. As I said right at the start of, of my slides, becoming certified actually sets you apart from all of the other BAs who are out there in the market because it really demonstrates that your commitment to, to continued learning. And, and, and yes, it, it sets you apart from any other BA who doesn't necessarily have, have the background. I, I've been dealing with a couple of BAs or aspiring BAs in the past couple of weeks who really want to move out of test analysis or out of maybe even project management or out of some other role like um, like some other analyst or some operational role into business analysis. And once they enter the interview process or they enter the application process, the first feedback is, but yes, I can, I can see a desire to do that. And I can, I can even see the training you've done, but where is the certification or where is the, um, where is the experience? Because many people want experience, but if you have the certification, at least you can demonstrate that you have some internationally recognized certification behind you to back up your, your training that you've done so far. And that then is the end of my slides, at which point I would like to hand over to Annalisa to give us just a couple of her thoughts. So are you on the line? Um, Annelise, are you there? Paul, I guess if Annelise is not on the line, perhaps we can um, we can open up to some questions and answers. Yes, I think so. Um, I want to stay there because I think there's a question here from Kinsley that uh, you kind of touched on that might want you to expand a bit. Okay. Uh, Kinsey asks uh, or says, I have been in the IT field for a few years and I'm looking at becoming a VA. Please advise how to go about this. So, Kinsey, I, I, um, I, I think, yes, I, I, I think that this is the perfect, this perfect webinar for you. The first thing would be is to have a look at your resume and identify those tasks and projects that you've been involved with that you've been doing business analysis related activity um, or, or tasks and start highlighting those and start um, and, and start expanding on that even in your resume to actually highlight that so that that is um, so, so that that's top of mind what's nice about the ec certification is that you don't actually need any business analysis experience so if i were you i would attend some business analysis training and Perhaps at this stage, don't, don't fork out all the money to go on, onto one of those big diploma courses that cost between you know, 35 and 40,000 Rand, but rather start with something a lot smaller and something a lot more basic, just to at least get you started. And then I also think that doing the ECBI certification will back up 
that training that you've been on. And then, yes, I think um, attend as many BA events as you can and start getting to, start getting to know some other BAs and start applying for, for business analysis jobs that you believe you can do. And if you, for example, if you're working in banking, start off with business analysis jobs in banking as well. And perhaps even in specific areas of banking that you, that you have some experience. Yeah, so okay. I lost time there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to... Sorry, Paul, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. No, I, I lost sound, so I, I, I lost you. I'm not sure where you are. <laughs> okay. Um, can, can you hear me again, though? Yeah, can. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, Kingsley, if you can maybe just end the chat or you can unmute to something and just give us some indication of whether we've answered the question. I'm going to move on to some, some more questions. Okay. Um, there's one so here from Marna, from, yes. um, which is along the same lines. Um, she says, what type of experience do you acquire for the EC, ECBA certification? So maybe we can just touch quickly on that experience side. Uh, that yes. Required. Absolutely. So for the ECBA certification, you'd need absolutely no experience, which is great for anyone who doesn't have any experience. I, I think um, everyone always complains. Each, every recruiter wants experience, but how are you going to get recruiter? If, how are you going to get experience if you can never get a job? What's nice about the ECBA is you can actually get it without any experience. Literally, the only thing you need is to have attended the training. Um, so, Marvin, I hope that answers the question. Um, okay. Okay, there's another question relating to an FTI business analysis BA certification also from Mona. And she asked, does, yep. would this add any value to my certification process? And I think you, you answered that earlier on. Um, I, I certainly, from my perspective, I think for ECBA, as Francis said, I do something lighter that's less expensive. If you do more something along the, the CBAP line, I think that FTI can, can add some value there. Yes. I, th I think it's um, this is maybe maybe a nice point to to actually um, just just put put in something about training and about the diploma. I I, I did a, um, the BA diploma as well, but not through FTI. And what I found while doing the diploma is that it the reason why it added value to me at the time was because I already had some business analysis experience. I I think um, any of the experienced BAs on the line will will concur that the actual theory of business analysis is relatively easy. Um, it's taking that theory and applying it in practice that becomes interesting. And when you, when you do something like the BA diploma without any experience to back it up, it will seem easy, but you won't have any context in which to relate it. Whereas if you bring some, some experience into the BA diploma, for example, you, you can actually start relating all of the concepts back to the experience and you can see how, how some of your past mistakes you could have avoided or, or you, you can bring some of your experiences into it to see how you could have done it better because of the new context you're getting from the, from the theory. So I think long story short, um, if, if you're looking at the ECBA certification as an aspiring BA, um, I think it might be a bit premature to be, to be, doing, to be doing the diploma. Um, again, a, a question from Marna, uh, what is the cost of the, of the Babak 3? Marna, you, you get the Babak 3 for free if you are a member, and Paul, well, um, maybe I need to call on you to correct me here. I, my information might, might be outdated, but as far as I know, you can only get the Babok 3 if you're a member, or you need to purchase it. Um, yes, that's correct. So you can go to Amazon and you can purchase the BA Babok uh, 3 there, but quite frankly, it's almost the cost of, of a membership of the IBA. So rather, just, if you wanna go buy it, go to the IBA, get a membership, and you'll get to be, be able to free, so you get more for the value of your money. That is my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I, Paul, I, I, definitely, I definitely concur. Um, I'm, I'm just quickly, I see the next question from William. How much does it cost to register and write the ECBA? Um, William, I'm quickly going to go back to another slide. Hi, Dick. So there's, there's two, two places where you, where you pay. Um, the first one is the application fee, which is 60 US dollars. 
And the next place is the exam fee. And as I said, there you have two options. You can either um, pay as a non-member, which will cost 235 US dollars, or you can pay as a member, which will altogether cost you 195 US dollars. And of course, when you become a member, you get all of the you get all of the other benefits of the IIBA membership as well. Um, there's a question here from Sue. Um, I did the FGI course and have 10 years experience with this certification added value. Sue, you should, I, I think you should be looking at uh, something like the CBAP rather, um, because the CBAP is probably, with your years of experience, is probably more suitable to you. Um, I will, Absolutely. I will tell you that, that the exam is, is a lot more difficult than the, the ECBA. Um, because it's now case uh, study based questions, but I wouldn't be looking at the ECBA in my opinion. Why do you want to add anything to that? Yes. Um, so the application process is also a bit more involved. Um, I, I used to joke that if you can get past the application process for a CBAP, you, that uh, the actual CBAP exam is, is a walk in the park. I, I said that a bit tongue in cheek, but nevertheless, um, we have a, uh, Paul, that you probably know better than I, but when's the, when's the webinar on the CBAP certification? Okay, so we just had one about a month ago, um, and okay. um, I don't have the dates in front of me, um, but there is one coming up in the next, I think in the next two months. But Sue, uh, you're welcome to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll give you all the information you need because I'm currently with, doing my CBAP. And as Francis said, that uh, whole portfolio of evidence, I'm three months down the line still trying to figure it out and load it up on the website. It's quite a lot of work. Okay, thank yeah. you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay. This is the first time I'm doing this. And so, yeah, <laughs> being quite experimental. <laughs> so, yes. Um, all right. Thank you. I shall do that. Great, thanks, Sue. I see we have a question from Ranesh. Um, could someone who, who does this ECBA with plus minus three years experience uh, go on to CBAP? Um, again, Paul, I, just, I think you know the requirements a bit better than I do. Yeah. But I think in this case, the CCBA will probably be more appropriate. I think altogether the, the hours requirement for CBAP lands up being between, between six and eight years. Now, um, now Francois, if you stop sharing, let me just get my slide up here. Great. Okay. Um, Great. Now I can Facebook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you caught me out. Okay. Um, can you see my slide there? Yes. Sir. Yes, we can. Um, there, with the ECBA and, and CBAP and all that. So um, there you can see, I mean, that's three years that... Um, Rajesh was asking about. So I would say that he's probably more in the ECBA kind of field with three years experience. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay, okay, true. Yeah. The CBAP is, is 10 years plus. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, do you have any other questions? Anyone else got some questions? Okay, yeah, we've got one from Mana again, uh, Francois. Okay. Um, um, so uh, yeah, Mana's asking. Yeah, oh, sorry, man. Okay. 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 Cool, man. Um, she says she's completed the FTI certification about 10 years ago and she's been working as a systems analyst and last three years as a BA and systems analyst. Would ECBA be the next step or can I work towards CCBA? Um, Mona, I'm, I'm going to hesitantly say this, but I. I think if you if you look at the CBAP application and you map the the tasks you've been doing to the Babok tasks, I think you might even find that you are good to go for a CBAP. If have you so in the ten years you've been since you've been doing um, since you've done the FTI certification, yes, you have been working as a systems analyst. Now, if you you'll see in the in the Babok that. Um, that they, they do say that often the, the, the titles systems analyst and business analysts are, are used interchangeably. Some, some organizations call their BAs systems analysts. So what I'd really recommend you do is to actually go through the tasks in the Babok and see whether 
all of what you've been doing in the past 10 years aligns to those tasks. And if they have at least, I'd say 80 to 90%, I think you can perhaps even investigate doing the CBAP. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, so if I can add to that, I mean, the beer book, um, it, it talks not so much about the title of business analyst, but about the, the function and role that you do as a business analyst it counts more towards this than, than the actual title of business analyst. Um, what you also need to do as well um, is just have a look in terms of in each of those knowledge areas, you've got to have at least 900 hours in four of the six. So just kind of gauge whether you fit within that and whether you would qualify for a, a CBAP. Yep. So, so, so Marna, to sum that up, yes, that means um, join the IFBA and get reading, <laughs> reading the Babak. That, that, sounds, that sounds like the best next step for you. Um, question from Ranesh, can we share the slides? Um, Paul, I don't know what's the best way to share the slides. Do we have everyone's email addresses to, to send them out? Um, yes, so um, I will load them up um, onto uh, YouTube with the video. And um, yeah, if you just send me your slides, Francois, then I'll, I'll send them out to everyone um, on email. Oh, great stuff. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, sorry, Francois, I've got a question for you. Yes. And, um, it's, um, so I'm busy with my CBAP, and this obviously applies to me as well. How do you remember, memorize all those techniques? <laughs> So, um, I let's um, let's let's call it. I use the risk-based approach. <laughs> so, I think the, the important bit is to be conversant in them. So, if, if I if I, for example, ask you what is item tracking, can you can you in a sentence or two tell me what what it is, and not necessarily know the definition word by word, but at least be conversant. And however, what what is important is knowing which techniques belong to which task. Um, that, that really is the most important bit. I don't think you need to rattle off all the techniques one by one, but uh, if you know at least that requirements design um, involves the following couple of techniques, then, then, then you're good to go. Yeah. And then I, I know it, um, I might sound like a broken record here, but <laughs> the practice exams will give you a very, very good idea of how the questions around the techniques are, are, are being asked. Okay. Um, I just see everyone's sending me email addresses, guys. I, I just don't have the, the, the enough hands to copy and paste email addresses. So I've put my email address there. If you want the slides, just pop me email and I will respond to you and send them on to you. Thanks. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So the last call for the last few questions from anyone. Uh, I think that's it at this point in time. Sorry, who's speaking? From my time. Sorry, it's Sue here from my point in time. Okay. At this stage, I think there's nothing. Okay, cool. Right. So, should yes. Should we, should we make the call out then for anyone who wants to join a study group, if we can facilitate that here? Yes, so I think on that email uh, address that I've put out, um, if you just indicate to me if you want to be part of a, of a, of a study group. Um, Francois, how do we want to, to coordinate this? Um, I think, Paul, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's collect all the email addresses of everyone who, who, want to, who want to form part of a study group. And then we'll send a, um, a group email out to everyone who wants to be part of the study group to those people who are interested. And I think then you can coordinate it from there. Or meaning not you, Paul, um, whoever yeah. wants to be part of the study group, they can, they can coordinate it amongst themselves once, once you've introduced them to each other. Yeah. And we can certainly introduce them to a tool like Zoom as well to help them uh, set up uh, sessions like this to talk to each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so if there, if there are no more questions, um, I'm going to close off the evening. And um, I've had someone watching and listening uh, to all the questions and uh, to make this fair, they've given me a name who they think is the best uh, question. Um, so this has got nothing to do with me. I've stood aside and let someone else do it. And the person that's won our gift voucher, the 250 rand from Take Lot, is Sue. Well done, Sue. Okay, thank you. That's great. <laughs>
on, on your first Zoom session, Sue. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting, I must say. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, guys, thanks to everyone for coming out and, and uh, logging in and uh, listening. Uh, please connect with us on LinkedIn if you want to. You're welcome to ask questions and um, uh, send me an email uh, if you want the slides and if you want to be part of a study group and we will in the next couple of days sort that out. Thanks to Francois. Thank you for your, your time and thank you for your presentation. It was great and thanks to everyone. Goodbye. It has Thank been you very time. much. Thank you, yes, Appreciate it for this time. Okay. okay. Oh, yes, and thanks to Get Smarter. We can't forget them. They made this possible. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye, guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Yes,